on as Mark in this video I show you how I put this laminated wooden ribbon on this box. I'm going to start the video with the, with the basics, the basics of the box already made. So it's just just a simple, simple finger joint on there which I just cut on, the, on a router table jig. There's loads of videos on YouTube how to do that if anyone's interested. So I've got the, the top and bottom here. So I'll just mainly concentrate on how I do how I actually put do, do the, the ribbon rather than the box. So the way the actual ribbon itself and then I've just got well, a couple of bits of sepelia at each end, some poplar there and a piece of oak in the middle. So I'm going to glue these together and then I can rip them into thin strips to then laminate them up into the um, ribbon. When I've done this before I just use like normal sort of that normal like that gorilla glue and when you soak them in the water to allow you to bend them into tight shapes a couple of it is starting to come apart a little bit so I've got some epoxy left so I'm going to tr try that this time just to see if it's well, hopefully be a bit more waterproof but I mean you just need a, wa a waterproof glue really otherwise well, when you get them wet they come apart so I've glued the, the top and bottom on the box I've got all those the, the ribbon all glued up I put a bit of tape in there if you can see Put a bit of blue tape in the middle so I've, got, I've done two, two lengths of it because the time you rip it all down you need, need a fair bit I want to make sure I've got plenty so I'll let all this dry and then I can crack on. Glue dry, dry now so I'll clean these two rib ribbon strips up so they're ready for ripping down now so the next thing I'm going to do is on the actual sort of across the, 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 the lid and down the sides of the box so the ribbons that actually go around the box I want them sort of rebated in so they're flush with the box so they don't stick out I think it, look, it, look not, it looks nicer like that. So I'm going to cut a really thin rebate, sort of on a lot, almost like in a cross shape on top of the box. So I've cut, cut, cut the rebate all the way around the, the box sides as well. So that's sort of as where the ribbon going to wrap around the box. So I've got cut down the strip of that well, the ribbon wood, as it were. I'm now going to glue that into this all the way around. It's about, suppose, about five mil thick. I might drop the corners so it looks like you know it wraps all the way around. So I've sanded all that flush with the top of the box. So now I've got so. Well, that's basically the ribbon as it was going right around the box. You can leave it proud if you want. I mean, I know you don't have to fluff, you know, I just think it looks nicer if you get it flush with the top of the box. So I've now made up, well, basically put these sort of paper templates. For the ribbon. And then you've got these like that, which are going to be the ends of the ribbon. There's another one that goes across the middle. So to, to turn those, obviously they're going to be wood when it's finished. So I've also made up these ply formers which go inside, which is the inside shape. Of that. So I'm going to make enough of these because I want to bend the um, so sort of th thin veneers of wood, the same as this, round these to, f to form up the, w the wooden ribbon. So I'll make up a load of these, some for that. To cut down the, the ribbon, I'm actually going to sort of, you know, to laminate the bow with. That's a one mil packer, and that just is tight to get it in between the fence and the blade. I mean, it will be better to cut them on a bandsaw, because obviously, the thickness of that blade is more than one mil, it's probably like one and a half, two mil. So you're throwing away more than you're using, more, more of it's going into sawdust than you're actually using. So you've got something, well, which is about, if you line the two together, you're about a millimetre thick, which is what, what I've cut. But you do get a much nicer cut on a circular saw, on a, on a saw bench, so it's really up to you. But that. No, well that's how I've done it anyway, but I mean you do get an awful lot of waste which is the, the problem and I mean you can't actually cut any closer. I've got myself a tube of water here. I mean you can use anything, you just want to find something long enough or big enough you can get them all in. So I've got all the 
bits of those thin rips I cut down. I'm going to stick them in the water for about 20 minutes to allow me to bend them around those profiles. So that's why I was saying about earlier in the video about using waterproof glue because I've done it before with that PVA glue and you put them in and when they come out a couple of them are starting to come a bit so hopefully with the epoxy they'll all still be together when they come out. I'll find out in about 20 minutes. So they've been in the water for about 20 minutes now. So I've taken them out. So you should just bend round now. So you can start start them in the middle. Gently work them round. Push it tight onto the tight to the form as you can get it. Clamp on there. Just leave them to dry now. It's quite good. They have, they have, they've all stayed. All well, the ones I can. They've all stayed together as well, which is quite good. Now I've not had any of them separate, so the epoxy did work. Okay, got them all all bent round. On this, um, like the one which is going to be like the end of the ribbon, the funny shape thing. I put a bit of pipe in there to help push it into that. You can see in there, just helps rather than trying to get a flat. It just makes it go down nice. They haven't gone, they haven't gone too bad. Um, you just need to take it quite slowly when you bend them. If they're not bending, you know they're trying to split or anything. Just put them back in the water, soak them a bit more, and they seem to go. But it seemed to work okay. Let them dry and then glue them up. They've dried out. So they've all, I've taken my, the clamps off, so they all are now like, sort of, they'll all bend easily now around those formers. But what, what's happened in a couple of them is where, where those metal spring clamps are, it's marked, it's left like a black mark where the water and the metal have got together. So the, with some of the clamp marks, so what I'd do, you just put the bit that was out, the bit that was outside, inside if that makes sense so you get the two and that way i'll get rid of any any marks but to glue them up what i found the easiest way to do it is obviously put glue in between the, the two bit the two pieces and then to tape it together that way you keep it nice and tight you know on the edge joint it stops them slipping around and obviously the clamps aren't going to mark them as well now so then just put them back in the in, in the form as exactly as when they were wet when you're gluing them up, it's just temptations. You obviously want to get in, if you bent them in a shape, you want to get them glued up. But if you do it too quick, it hasn't wood hasn't dried out, you, you end up trying to glue two bits of wet wood together, which doesn't really work. So you have to do give it a little bit of time to go off or dry. I thought I could, while I was waiting for the glue to dry on the, on the ribbon, I thought I'd cut through to separate the box. What I've done is because obviously. When you put it all the way through the circuit, you know, the saw bench, it's always a chance when you cut the pulse side of it sort of closing on itself and you're nicking it. So I've cut like 99 percent of the way through, and then you can just get a knife. Score around and off the lid one. The glue's dry, I've stripped all the, the tape off. I've just re-glued on these the actual sort of loops for the bows. Just the two pieces together as they come round, so I just glue those two together now. So yeah, just to just to form the loop. While the glue's drying on those loops, I'll get on with these. So I've got these, just cut some little thin strips down. I'm just going to glue them inside the, the lid, just so when the just to hold the, the lid on, you know, like on an offset, it's in position. Because I mean, it'd be a bit you could hinge it, but trouble is if someone folds it back with all that bow on the top, it's more likely to get damaged. It's not. It's not really ideal, it is if you can just lift the whole lid off, put it to one side, then put it back on again. So I'll get that done while the glue dries on the rest of those, and then start assembling the bow on the top. So, it's finished, so that now, that now comes on and off. 
I've sanded everything up. It's just literally the case now of assembling these, the, 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 the bow on the top. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the old super glue and accelerator just to hold them in position and put some put PVA glue on them as well just to actually you know, properly stick them. So I'll start doing that and I'll come back and film a bit more. So I've glued all, all the loops on. So now you've got these these sort of ribbon ends. So on one end you've got like an offset mitre because you haven't got a square because you've got an oblong box. Got a little V on the other end which is like the end of the ribbon which just to give it a bit of decorative thing. And the little bow in it, kink just, you know, sets it up off the box so it looks like the ribbon's sort of curling up. Just gives it a bit more of a feature than just sitting on the, you know, flat on the box. So I'll get these, I'll glue, I'll glue these on, and there's just one more loop then that goes over the top. The only piece I've got left now is this, this sort of this loop which goes over the top just to sort of finish it off across there. But I mean, I'm just going to have to super glue it on because there's not much else other way of gluing it on and just hope no one uses their handle to keep picking it up. That's actually stuck on there quite well. You can lift the bottom. Not that I'd be recommending people do that. So just give it a final little sort of wipe over one of these sanding pads, I don't know what it is, these soft sanding pads just to get, because when you spray all that accelerator on, you get like sort of little watery marks on there, so I'll clean all those off, give it a coat of, just give it a coat of Osmo and see what it looks like. Done. The oil really brings out the colours really nice. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, please subscribe. Thanks a lot.